In previous reports and statements, the IMF has repeatedly warned about headwinds, excesses, storm clouds approaching, etc. But never has there been a warning this dire. We are standing at the precipice. We are at the edge of the cliff. One gust of wind can knock us off. So far, so good. But as more and more QE fills the system, inequality rises, fueling the rage, the damage will compound. Debt on the consumer end will only get worse and worse as people have less and less disposable income. This can only go on for so long. Eventually, a trigger will flip and the darkness will take the light. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. It all sounds so doom and gloom, they'll say, but let me give you an analogy. Imagine trying to grow a plant in 24 hours of light. It doesn't work. It needs the darkness too. This is just the way it works. And so if you relate that to what happens in the financial industry, Every so often, we have a recession, we have a correction, and yet they're trying to prevent it from happening. This is part of nature. It should occur, not in the excessive way that it does, not like 2008, not like 2000. These are created by central bankers. There should be natural corrections along the way. Things get a little too heated, and certainly it comes down, and then you have businesses, and you have individuals, and they start to rebuild on that, and it goes higher and higher and higher. That goes for the economy, that goes for the stock market. Today, they're trying to financial engineer all of this garbage, making it worse and worse, making these ups and downs more exaggerated. Today, I have about 20 tabs open right now. It's going to be insane, this video. I'm going to talk about the IMF first. I want to show you what they had to say. We're going to look at earnings. We're going to look at the stock market. I want to show you what's happening with the flows for both equities and bonds. I haven't been covering that recently. I wanted to give you an update on it. I'm going to show you one of my favorite books I've ever read as well, so stay tuned on that. I'm going to show you what's going on with so many different indicators. Let's get into it right away. This is out of the Guardian, and basically they're just quoting what the head of the IMF had said. I know the font is really small. I just want to touch on a couple points for a minute to lead into this video. That's why I'm using it right here. The head of the IMF has warned that the global economy risks a return of the Great Depression driven by inequality and financial sector instability. So what we have here, of course, driven by QE. In my opinion, that's the way that this has been happening because we have created a more moral hazard. We have encouraged risk taking and it's never going to be fixed by more QE. It's never going to be fixed by more debt. But yet, what are their solutions? More QE, more debt every single time. It can't work. Eventually it blows up. But in the meantime, it's time to party like it's 1999. As I have done before in the past, you see that she actually related what's happening right now to the Roaring Twenties. A hundred years ago, they were partying, they were feeling pretty good, but 1929 came around and suddenly that bubble burst. She also talks about inequality and what has happened. This is fueling the rage, it's making things worse. And right down here, she said that excessive inequality hinders growth, can fuel populism and political upheaval. If you look at places around the world, they are a erupting. People are so upset today. And in fact, I was reading some report that suggested something like 40% of the world will see upheaval where they live this year, 2020. We'll see if that actually happens. But if you look, many cities have already erupted. That doesn't look good for the future. So we'll see what happens. Of course, I'll cover that here on the channel. I want to show you a few examples of the euphoria that we're seeing today and how much they're pushing this. Earnings will decide whether the market it continues to hit new highs after another week of records. Yes, earnings really matter now. They haven't mattered all of this period of time because they've been terrible, but yet all of a sudden, now they matter. Honestly, it's a joke when I see this because they have not been a factor whatsoever all of these previous quarters. And they're trying to suggest to us that the investors actually look at earnings? This is a joke. Quantitative easing, particularly evident with QE4, has shown us that nothing matters anymore. If the Federal Reserve is going to be there, that's all they care about. Wealthy investors see nothing that will stop this relentless bull market. They get into the details of why, but this is actually a contradiction to the information I had shown you just recently, how they seem to be stacking things like gold. I'll also show you the fund flows, whether it's money markets, 
markets and so on, a lot of money is flowing into the money market instead of where most people think it's going, and that is into stocks. Yes, they are risk on. Yes, they are definitely putting money into stocks. I'll show you that in a second, but not as much as you think. We still have stock buybacks being the primary buyer. Don't be left behind. This stock market's rise is going to speed up. This is a prediction being made. This is what you see all the time. Forbes, in this case, trying to push things on you, trying to tell you what you need to do with your money. But this is what gets clicks. This is what gets all the hits. So, of course, this is the type of titles that you're going to see. This individual doesn't know what's going on, just like all of those other people making predictions. It's so unbelievably terrible when I see this type of behavior going on in the financial system, but I've heard it, seen it with my own eyes, and of course it will continue. Federal Reserve balance sheet versus the S&P 500. Stop looking at everything else and look at this chart. You will see this for yourself. Come on. That line right in the middle, Fed announcing the $60 billion per month purchasing program, also known as QE4. CNBC didn't want to say it, but you can see how this will rocket up higher and higher. They move in lockstep. Even CNBC has said that. Just covered that, I believe, in yesterday's video. Anybody who denies this, like Neil Kashkari, is is, quite frankly, out of their mind. Earnings growth versus the S&P 500. Okay, so terrible earnings. You don't have to worry, though, because analysts project much higher earnings per share starting in 2020. Now, this business is ridiculous unless they're going to be buying back a whole bunch more shares. That's the only reason why we have seen this happen in the way it has. Why earnings have looked the way they are is because of quantitative easing, fueling the cheap debt, buybacks happening, all kinds, record amounts, and so the stock prices look much better than they really should be. Then we have this, cash equities plus ETFs short interest, single stock plus ETF shorts shown as negative as a percent of the S&P 500. Basically what we're seeing is a record low short right now. Record low shorts and why? Because people are more and more bullish. There are very, very few people who want to short the market and for obvious reasons. Why would you at this time when things are going to go up forever and ever and ever? And according to the Federal Reserve, they won't see another crisis in their lifetime. Well, thank you very much, Janet Yellen. Who is buying equities? Corporates. You've seen this chart before. I don't think this includes the newest data, but I just wanted to make a point. I wanted to make it very clear. Corporations doing stock buybacks are the primary buyer of stocks. Think about how crazy that is. The primary buyer. You have any argument you want, please do so. You'll be doing it with yourself. But I just wanted to note the fact that we have seen these buybacks taking place for a while, but when they're the primary buyer for years and years, you know something is out of whack flows across major asset classes in the last 12 months. The blue line is equities, the green line is bonds, and then we have the money market funds. And that has seen a huge surge even through 2019. That surprised me. I wasn't necessarily expecting that because now we've had this big change of heart. Now you can see definitely that as of QE4, we have seen a rise in the amount of fund flows for equity. So basically more money moving into equities. That's clear. We know that that, but now I have the numbers behind this. We're also seeing it in the money market and the bonds, which was interesting. Not as many negative yielding bonds today, but I'm thinking US treasuries and, you know, along with the 20 year bond coming out, there's going to be more money going that way. This was a surprise overall. Flows by weekly and monthly reporting equity and bond funds. Now this right here just shows you more specifically, the blue is equity and the gray is bonds. And we have seen definitely a change from 2019. So the blues, as you could see throughout 2019, we had very few individual investors interested in equities at this time. They were actually flowing out and the stock buybacks were basically the only buyer. And then that changed because it was risk on. And we know what's happened with that, of course. However, there's still more money going into bonds than there is into equities. Sector fund flows. So you can see the cumulative global sector flows. It breaks it all down. Real estate actually on the top of the list. Technology as well. Energy and healthcare at the bottom. You can look at the rest for yourself. This just gives us from January 2019 up until January 2020. That's just some more information for you. And then we have the weekly announced buybacks of the S&P 500 
Big change, actually, when you see that they have been buying less of the shares, or at least the announced buybacks. So we're going to see what happens. I have been covering this very regularly because of how important it is. I want to see if the market can be sustained if we actually see a substantial decline in the buybacks. Surely we can have central banks pumping up more money into the system. We could have other buyers come in, whether it's from international buyers, whether it's hedge funds and so on, I want to see how this all stacks up and I will give you updates on that as regularly as possible. Take a look at this cumulative weight of the top five names in the S&P 500. We haven't seen this since, guess what? The dot-com bubble. That's right. Of course, this kind of behavior is very dangerous. We did see something similar occur back during the financial crisis, but it never got a chance to get to the bubble in the financial side simply because it popped the housing crisis and so on. I wanted to note something. The difference between 2008 and 2000 was that 2008, we had the housing crisis and this housing crisis actually really exposed the rot underneath the financial system and created a big problem. We know about that. Now, in the case of 2000, we had the actual financial system itself deteriorating rather rapidly when everything, every metric, every sensible thought was thrown out of the window and instead the pricing for everything was infinite. But of course, you know what happened. Today, we've got a mixture of the two. I think it's a lot more like 2000, but it doesn't really matter. We're splitting hairs at this point. Ultimately, at this time, right now, as I record this, QE4 is the only thing that the market cares about. Is the Federal Reserve printing? Yes, risk is on the table. Aggregated US equity futures positions. This is at a record high right now. This, of course, will increase as long as we keep fueling the debt bubble. This is the S&P 500 buybacks, and I wanted to give you this because it just shows you that, number one, they are still excessively high. We're going to see because it looks like it's turning down. And why would they turn down? Well, of course, there could be a blip. It could be just a short-term factor here. But if it's continued, it's because they see this market coming down and they want to soften how much they're pumping in. When prices get to a more realistic level, then they start to do the buybacks again. That's what happened last time and you could see that in previous instances as well but buybacks have become more excessive in the last decade definitely more than we have ever seen before and all of this may not make sense to most people they may not care but if you want to know what's actually happening whether it's with earnings or whether it's with the financial system itself and you haven't read this book please do yourself a favor and read it it's by frank partnoy the book is called infectious greed i have a link down in the description under my favorite book you don't have to use my link if you don't want to, but it's in there. Basically, he gets into all of the detail and I've had people, multiple people on this channel who have told me based on my recommendation that they read it and thought it was incredible and why it's only four out of five stars. That's a joke. And why more people haven't heard about this is really beyond me. I'm not exactly sure how I got this book. I don't remember if somebody recommended it or I just found it, you know, scanning through 100%, 100% recommendation for it definitely tells you everything that led up to the point of the financial crisis. This income inequality is so extreme today, in my opinion, gone way beyond what we saw during the roaring 20s. The world's richest 2,000 people hold more than the poorest 4.6 billion combined. And people that are investors today, what I call the seven share of Amazon type investor, they see themselves as part of this club somehow. They say, well, I invest in the same companies that Warren Buffett does. I own some Facebook. Maybe I own a little bit of an ETF that has some Oracle in it, I feel that we are on the same page and somehow this misguided thought process has pushed them to these euphoric beliefs and they're going to be burned by it. You are not part of the club. George Carlin said it best, and people don't take that advice. They think it's comedy. He wasn't trying to be funny. Commercial and industrial loans, you could see what has happened here. It is a good indicator to watch for. This has declined, as we have seen during the whole 2015, 2016. I would call it a mini recession. We did see that dip down, not as excessively as we did see back in 2008 and in 2001. It will be interesting to keep following this because that's one of those indicators that can't really be manipulated as easy as something like the stock market. 
Job openings, total non-farm has declined as well, something that we have seen a few times before, good indicator also. Industrial production index, this is one that did get hit back in the 2015-2016 timeframe and also in the two previous recessions. Motor vehicle retail sales, specifically the heavyweight trucks, I've shown you many of these different indicators. All of these add up as well. You know, you look at any of the class eight big trucks, anything to do with this, it's all declining right now. Some businesses are still doing well, that's for sure. I guess it depends on what exactly they are shipping, where it's going to, where it's coming from. But in general, when I see this information, not just in the United States, whether it's rail, air, sea, it doesn't matter. This is all going down, it seems. And then we have the total market cap and the US GDP. I've shown you this many times before. They call it the Warren Buffett indicator, moving to a level we have never in history seen. This is so excessive today. And imagine, just imagine the reversion to the mean. This would be disastrous, not just for those particular stocks, but of course, everything interconnected. Housing and derivatives that are all connected to that and the credit cards, the student in debt, everything else. Then we're going to look at this really quickly before we end the video. The GDP now stats from the Atlanta Fed showing 1.8% as of January 17, 2020. I've been giving you updates on this. It has moved closer to what we see at the New York Fed and the now cast model showing 1.22%. So the GDP is looking weak despite the fact that they've been pumping so much money into the system. I have covered way too many things today. You know what? If you want to support me, if you want to do me a favor, just click one button click the like button to show your support i really want to thank you for that it does help me out a lot if you want to learn about business about passive income and you want to make money online i have created a free 100 no catch e-course to teach you step by step how to sell on amazon as well as e-commerce the amazon gps.com all right, so you want to learn about the financial system, but there's so much garbage in the way. There's so much jargon. Where do you begin? These two books are what you need. Now, maybe you don't need these books yourself. Maybe you already know, but maybe a friend, maybe a family member, maybe a coworker would really, really be able to use some of these. So check them out. Look in the description where you can actually flip through the pages of these books for yourself. If you want the audiobook, go to themoneygps.com. Hello, my friend. Thank you for still being here on the video. This was so detailed. There was so much here. But if you haven't seen this video, you want to watch it. Definitely. So check it out and I'll see you there.